and welcome to another edition of Harona. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this special edition this week. And my guest is somebody I've looked up to for many years. It's a track star, a sports person, and an educationist. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Lamin Drame. Doctor, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Mr. Drame. Thank you. And, um, you know, sports, how did it come to you? I mean, amazingly, uh, I wasn't too certain about you pursuing a career as an academic. But then I knew sport will take you places. Sport have taken me places. Um, it started in Buyam, of course, where I am born and raised, and all the way to a university degree because of an ability in athletics. Hmm. Um, Mom have seen sport as a nuisance because, you know, to them in the era of Jawara, they are always encouraging every parent to send their kids to school. So education is important to her. And she wanted me to go to school, not only stay on the farm and do the field work. Mm -hmm. And I became an athlete, you know, accidentally, of course, because mm -hmm. I was not supposed to be an athlete. I was supposed to go to school and study and do my homework. Mm -hmm. You know, then come home, do some family chores, go to the farm and do little things I have to do. Every child must do. Mm -hmm. But I have to add athletics to it, sports to it, and that became a burden for her, and she was against it at the beginning. But now I'm glad she is able to appreciate it, and I think every parent should understand it's not where you start in life, it's where you end in life. Most young people that grew up in the provinces, I will not particularly describe Buyam as the provinces, but as far as a lot of combo people are concerned, beyond Brikama, is provincial. Now, <laughs> would come to Banjul and then go to high school or secondary school. How do you find settling when you just arrived? Challenging as it would be, because even though it is one country, the Gambia was, you know, have a lot of partitioning within the social construct. Mm -hmm. um, the combos are seen as the affluent part of the country. Mm -hmm. where much is happening, mm -hmm. and as you rightly stated, anything outside of Berikama, mm -hmm. and you are not in the combos, and yes, we are missing the provinces, even though it's only 105 mm, kilometers from, how do you call it, from Banjul. Mm -hmm. um, I see the settlement challenging at the beginning because mm -hmm. I have to learn all of more more fluently because most of my friends speak Wolof and they have to learn Mandinka from me and others. So socially, socially it was helpful to me. Um, uh, Relationship-wise, it was useful because Gambia, regardless, we are very supportive people of each other. Mm -hmm. We are very kind to each other. Um, uh, we have our differences, tribal differences, ethnicity, what have you. Mm -hmm. But when you boil it down to the, the identity as a Gambian, we are one people, you know. I always believe that, and I've seen that when I transitioned from Fonyi to Combo to go to school, mm -hmm. and I have lifelong friends, most of my friends I am in touch with today. Mm -hmm. Most of them are people I met in the Combo. Well, uh, settled in okay, now going to school. It's also, like, vastly different. Indeed. I mean, now going to high school from primary school and going to a very competitive high school at the time. So education-wise, understanding instructions, understanding and grappling with the new social construct that you find yourself in, and then now have to elevate yourself to a higher level of education. How did that go in class? Did you struggle behind the class for a moment or so before you could settle and fit in education-wise? Education was always a challenge for any Gambian because mm -hmm. most of us are speaking our local dialect and English become the medium of instruction throughout. Mm -hmm. And uh, those who can afford, you know, support for their children and they can provide them pri private support, mm -hmm. tutorials and what have you, they have a leg up over anybody else who is mm -hmm. not in that paradigm. And those I was from one of those. private primary school also. Exactly. Yeah. I was one of those. So coming in here, I have to, like my grandmother said, 
Have you studied? I said, where's the candle? Because we don't have a candle, but you know, I need to study. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, so those kind of memories from where I'm brought me to the realization that I have to redouble my effort at St. Augustine. It's competitive. It is one or two of the most competitive schools at the time when we are in college. Mm -hmm. How do you call it? In high school. Mm -hmm. We know we have to do everything right because Gambia High School is next door and the rigor is serious. You know, content is serious. Now, how do you balance it? Um, like you said, your mother was never keen on your sporting abilities. How do you balance it now, wanting to be settled in socially, wanting to also achieve academic excellence, but at the same time have the time as a track star to do the physical exercises and the mental uh, activities at the same time? I, I would think this will be uh, major multitasking. It's a multitasking on Fortunately for me and most of my colleagues at St. Augustine's, when we are competing at the highest level, we have an extraordinary coach called Sabali. Mm -hmm. Sabali instilled in us discipline, you know, that we can learn, you know, the fashion we have now, multitasking. We've been doing that. Mm -hmm. At least multitask. People just don't know. And a lot of times people think at least are not smart. Mm -hmm. They are mistaken. At least are the most disciplined people you can find. Because if you can compartmentalize, what you have to do on the track and then you can have to compartmentalize what you must do in the classroom you can do them well you are dynamic in what you do and uh, the discipline coming from our coach motivation we have among ourselves and the facilities here in the combo relative to buyam mm -hmm. was like night and day for me i couldn't just believe i can go to the stadium mm -hmm. there is no stadium in buyam Mm -hmm. cannot that believe that, is not. <laughs> I cannot believe that I can run a track on PM. That is nothing there. Now, coming to Combo with the values that my grandma instilled in me and mother told me to do was like, okay, I'm not from a wealthy family, but I'll be wealthy someday. But I can be effective and efficient in what I do, and I can make a difference in my community. But we know it is not a cakewalk to walk into St. Augustine and get out at the top of the school. Mm -hmm. We have done that both athletically and academically, and it's just because of so many people have given so much to us. Mm -hmm. You know, who know this kid from Buyam, but so many people helped him. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why in so many of my work I do, I try to return those back because it's never about me, because I don't exist mm -hmm. without so many of those people, and I don't know them until they came to know me and choose to know me and help me, then I know them back, mm. and then it can make a difference. And then it can make a difference. We'll take a very short break. When we come back, more from Dr. Lamin Drame. Stay with us. Welcome back to Harona with my special guest, Dr. Lamin Drame. Doctor, we talked about your childhood. We talked about Buyam. We talked about St. Augustine's and uh, your balancing act, track, Fail class and how that, that worked. Now we, we, you've witnessed Jawara, you've witnessed Jame partially, and you've now, you are now witnessing Baro. As far as we take politics aside for a moment, as far as education is concerned, do you think we're progressing as a nation, or do you think we can do more? In, in education, you, you can always do more. You should always try to do more. Because education is built on a fundamental framework of innovation, ingenuity, and growth. That's why we do research in universities, so we can learn new knowledge, understand new paradigms and new changes, create new medicine, provide new solutions to complex issues. So education can always improve, and certainly in the Gambia, that should be a priority and I am convinced that message is becoming to take shape mm -hmm. in the Gambia. Yes, on the job I was young in high school, you don't know better. All you want to do is uh, pass your exams before you fail. Mm -hmm. And then we are stuck in a, a structure with common entrance where the best and the brightest get to be elevated mm -hmm. and majority will be stuck because they cannot pass primary six common entrance. Mm -hmm. And those people do, do not have the opportunities that majority of the Gambian kids today have, mm -hmm. which is access to quality education. 
Mm -hmm. I use quality because that's what it should be. If the issue is do we have quality education today, my answer would be no. Mm -hmm. We can do more. We should do more. We must do more. But providing accessibility to every kid, whether you are in the combo or you are in Wooly or Sami, is fundamental responsibility. And I think that both Jaura administration and Jame administration to some extent have proliferated the education access. Mm. You know, I can remember it was like less than 10 high schools when we were in school, right? Definitely, far less. Now you have over 200 high schools across the country. That is growth. Mm. Kids going to school, that is growth. That is productivity. That is excellent. Now we should not truncate access for quality. Quality is not connected to access. We should do both. We must do both. That journey will be long and hard. It will not be easy. We don't anticipate it to be overnight. Even where I work and teach as a university professor and an executive in the university administration, we have to deal with students who are not prepared. Mm -hmm. We have to provide them support frameworks. We have students who are prepared. We don't need support for them. So it, we do what is called differentiated instruction. We should look at the education system in this perspective. It's a beautiful building. Mm -hmm. Looking from the horizon is well-structured sitting on top of a hill. Mm -hmm. The question is, once you walk in the building, what do you see? Mm. How is the kitchen look like? Mm -hmm. What is in the living room? How many doors are in the room? Mm -hmm. What are they made of? Those are the teachers that walk into those buildings. Those are the administrators I'm referring to who are teaching those kids and providing leadership to those teachers. These are the resources that they have, the textbooks, the learning material, the teacher's guides. This is the technology integration, how I infuse in technology because whether we like it or not, technology is here to stay. And it will move you from your job and put somebody in there who can do it. And eventually, it will move people out, and machines will do it for us. And people who have the know-how and the knowledge and the wherewithal are the ones who will be masterminding the machines. If you are not one of them, where are you? At home. That is what Gambia have to be facing right now. Do we have quality teachers in the classrooms? Do we have good assessment instruments that we can assess our education system and understand what we are doing? how well we are doing it. Are we using data analytics? Are we using data to make decisions? Are we using data to be aware? Are we using data to orient how we approach? Because if you don't follow data, data will kill you. Because what you're going to end up doing is sending good money after bad ideas. Mm -hmm. And how many of that have we done in the past? These are the questions I hope the government can begin to grapple with. And when I say the government, the Ministry of Education in particular, basic and secondary education, and how we do we infuse that with higher ed? That should be no breach. This country well, is very small. Why do you think it needs to be one ministry and not two? The needs are different, no? Are they, in your mind, uh, from your professional angle, we shouldn't be having two separate education ministries? I think what Gambia needs is a sound education implementation agency. That's the ministry we call it. To me, looking at size, yes, the orientation is different. Higher ed and basics and secondary education is not the same. But the ultimate goal for a Gambian leader would be, if you are at a high school and you are at the university, are you the best you can be in the Gambia? Mm -hmm. That is the question. And if the two frameworks giving you that answer, I think there are gaps, fundamental gaps in there. And I don't think those gaps are oblivious to the leadership, but they're there. Mm -hmm. Now, do we have enough resources to separate them? Maybe we do. I'm just saying, if it is going to be too separate, then the continuation of the curriculum, the collaboration, the leveraging that must do to tie the students that are going to get out of WASI to the university, they should be able to understand not only the areas of expertise they're going to be training and specializing in, mm -hmm. but that the continuum 
from Gabase to Wasi to the university level in the Gambia should be unambiguous. Mm -hmm. Right now, what we have right now is a good number of kids mm -hmm. are having limited amount of testing from grade one to grade nine, mm -hmm. testing that matter with consequence. Mm -hmm. They will have grade three and grade five not exams, assessments. Mm -hmm. Some institutions will adopt mock exams for WASI, some may not, mm -hmm. high schools in particular. But then you will take Gabase at grade nine, mm -hmm. then at WASI at grade 12, mm -hmm. and then what other assessments are there to let me know that the data we are getting at the end of WASI it's not an outlier because the data we get at the end of WASI, a good number of the kids don't pass more than three credits. This is where the fundamental public concern comes from, that um, we are not doing as well as we should be doing as a country. But a lot of us parents and a lot of us general public do not see this until the WASI. That, exactly, it, that's that the point, because you don't have enough benchmarking. Is it not too late at that point? It is beyond late. We failed them already. WASI would just be an affirmation of an ordained proposition that we abdicated a responsibility to adequately assess them. Because sometimes people think assessment is denying somebody access to further advancement. No. Assessment is to determine whether do we change the learning theory. What is the pedagogy we are doing? What is the instructional practices that we are implementing in the classroom? Is it related to discipline? Is it related to classroom management? Mm -hmm. Is it the content? Is it the curriculum adequate? Heck, what about the teachers? Do I believe that teachers should be in the classroom teaching kids? Should that teacher be even there? Not everybody should be a teacher. And not everybody who doesn't have their first job, their second job, should not consider teaching as their third job. Because their motivation level is not there. Their attention is not there. Their passion is not there because it's not their job number one. Mm -hmm. The government should find programs and strategies to mitigate them. Strategies on at retention recruit the appropriate people interested, provide them the relevant training they needed, and mm -hmm. pay them. You must pay them well. Well. And you have to pay them knowing that they are held accountable. Mm -hmm. Accountability is the baseline for the payment. It's not everybody should get, just get paid, or a, you know, a teacher is on maternity leave, don't show up to class or a teacher is absent, no consequence for them. Classroom management and our principals, headmasters, headmistresses, they should be trained on a new fundamental framework called instructional leadership. They should understand assessment, they should understand curriculum, and they should be competent in a learning theory. As an educator, I believe that every child can learn and every child has a word. Because somebody took the chance on me in Buyam because I could not speak English. I only speak Mandinka. I had to learn English. How I learn English, how I'm able to speak English, I'm sure that's how everybody, most of Gambia, I would, I would believe, learn English except those who speak English. So we have that, but I'm able to speak it today, you know, mm -hmm. so any child will be able to, if at all we are focused and driven and we hold our teachers accountable, but we give them the support they needed, the government should take the bull by the horn. And borough administration should understand the future of every society lies in the education of their children. Are you of the view, which I am, that we don't have enough tertiary education institutions, we don't have enough skills development, as it were, institutions, we are too focused on people that may become lawyers, doctors, people that will have a certain level of academic performance and excellence to be able to be given a chance. How about those who are not? The arts. 
Mm. And, and other options of education where the person's best abilities are put to work and not just the mental ability. We should be able to develop technical career education opportunities. And we should be able to prepare our kids to realize that these are not poor people's job. Mm -hmm. These are well-paying job, career-based job, technical skill job that you can either work for somebody or you can create your own business with it. Mm -hmm. And you will do well because in 2020, 2025, 2030, Gambia as well as the rest of Africa will grow and develop. Businesses will come to Gambia. Those people should be serviced. Whether we have career technical education in the nursing area, whether we have it in metal work, in woodwork, mm -hmm. in home economics, in arts and craft, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, whether we have in, you know, you know welding, you know, megatronics, it doesn't matter. Rob robotics is going to be the future. Gambia should use technology, and the earlier we infuse technology, these kids are not immune to it later. Mm -hmm. So we, yes, we want lawyers. Mm -hmm. Who don't need lawyers? <laughs> you know, we want doctors. Mm -hmm. Who don't need them? Because that's the societal construct we live in. But we also need plumbers. We need building construction experts. We need masons. These people need to go to technical schools. These are tertiary education institutions you're talking about. Not only a university where I'll get a degree in economics, degree in law, degree in what have you, but a technical career education institutions where I'll have a luncheon show and a technical certification that will give me a baseline for income earning. That will give me an opportunity to climb up the ladder. And that will get me out of the streets to a gainful employment status. It is a win for the government if they prioritize it for them. It is a win for the government because they get to collect revenue, they got to collect taxes, they got to collect income from these people. It's good for them because I have a self-worth. I am now doing what I wanted to do, even though it took me a while to know what that is. I will tie it back to the athletics. I said I became an athlete by an accident. Mm -hmm. Not only I became an athlete, I became one of the most superior athletes in the country. Not only did I become a superior athlete in the country, I became one of the most superior athletes in the United States, got into the Hall of Fame of my university. That is a lifetime, lifetime acknowledgement. That means that I live there forever as a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. And they didn't ask who is your father's last name, who they didn't ask where you come from, they didn't ask what do you do. Mm -hmm. They just look at your results. Mm -hmm. And we will take another break. When we come back, the final words before we say goodbye. Stay with us. Welcome back to Harona. Dr. Lamindrame is my guest today. Ha, ah, we've talked about a lot. You're quite passionate about education, and this is prevalent. It's very obvious as well. Um, if you would be asked to make a decision today, and it will happen in Gambian education system, what will be that single most important decision you will make immediately to bring about a needed quality change, advancement, sophistication, what we are lacking here as a country in our education system? I don't think the challenges with education can be reduced to a simple statement. Mm -hmm. I think it's complex, but there are a hierarchy of concerns and challenges and great opportunities. I talked about the incredible growth we have in terms of high schools and schools yeah. built across and more people going to school. And I also expressed the concern about lack of quality and the results of WASI and you know, being too late before people realize that we need to find a better way to assess the students early. Assessment that have meaningful impact in redirecting them and changing what we do. And I also acknowledge that um, it will not be done overnight in terms of getting to where we need to be. But we should start with the most important, two, two or three most important thing in the life of a student in a classroom. Mm -hmm. The books they read and the teachers who teach them. Facility is important, it's paramount. Uh, but a good textbook in the hands of a bad teacher is dangerous. Because what we want to do is that we do not have the luxury not 
to teach these students the right way. We don't have the luxury. We must teach them to think, not think alone. We must think, teach them how to think, not think alone. Now, if we teach them how to think, then they get to see a broader world and they can design and color that world the way they want to. Mm -hmm. Because you're teaching them the how. Then they get to do how they see is done. And they can fall and stand up on their own merits. It's called growth and development. We all have to go through that. So it will require a concerted effort where quality is built on the teacher efficacy, where student performance over time become the main baseline, not student achievement at the moment in time vis-a-vis -vis what is the performance at WASI. Because a bad student can pass WASI. Yes. A good student fail WASI. I know several great people who are good and they didn't do well at high school. Mm. And they are doing incredible work around the world because examination is not a fair test to one's knowledge at a moment in time. But in the continuum, we should be able to know whether the student is performing, articulating, critical thinking. Uh, are they thinking outside their own comfort? Are they able to read and write? Are they able to speak properly? And then uh, they have to be able to have competency in their skill set, their capacities, their competence, their own ability. And that is what education will then become a useful, meaningful tool for any of us. Let's put education aside. I, I think uh, you're very passionate. This is very obvious, for very obvious reasons. But how do you see New Gambia? Do you think, as a people, our aims, aspirations are being gradually achieved? But our government can do more, and I think Barrow administrators have a golden opportunity to hire the right people for the right jobs. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about how young that person is. They work hard for their degree. They work hard for that experience. They may not be here when Jame was here. They may not be in a tick of tins that people have to endure to see democracy come to power. They are as equal to anyone who was here. Mm -hmm. This is their home. And if they need to make a contribution, you should be jumping in and get them. And I think that will be important. And people like me will continue to support, will continue to contribute. I came here specifically to present on an important matter to me, education, to an advisory council on basic and secondary education. I did it on my dime. I'm not looking for a job from the government. I'm not. But to whom much is given, much is expected. That will be my message to the government. And we learn enough in 53 years. There are people in the Gambia right now whose parents have lived in a home without electricity, without water in 1964. There are people here whose children are living in the same condition in the same Gambia. In 2018. In 2018. That exists. And there are people in the Gambia whose fortunes have multiple in growth and size for their family in that same time span, nothing against that. They are the minority. The majority of the Gambians needed support. And the majority of those Gambians have children. And if we fix the need of the children, whether it's career technical education, whether it's a regular university education, that would be great because we don't have enough government jobs for everybody, but we have enough need. We need industry. They will come. When they come, they will need employees. Our kids should be able to know how to work in industry and business. We want to change the business climate here. We want to be efficient in customer service. We want to be about seriousness about this country. We can do it. And we must prioritize education. We must prioritize health care. And we must prioritize agriculture. We do those three things. Gambia can begin to have a contour on which we can stand on, and we will stand on, we must stand on, we have no alternative. Last message, but to young people, the youth, what would you tell them? 64% in my latest review of data tell me that 
64% of the Gambian people are under the age of 34. That's the youth body. 64. They are going to be the future of this country. How much debt do we want to leave them with? How many bad policies do we want them to own and inherit? They didn't inherit fortunes. They are not inheriting mansions. They are not inheriting quality facilities and education. We must not make them inherit debt. We must live within our means. We must do what is right. And every Gambian, I challenge them. This is the value proposition I have. If you put your country before yourself and you get up the sidelines and stop complaining and jump in, try to do something good, and you do it with integrity, we can all be better off. And that will be a better Gambia for all. And that is the Gambia I know is always possible. Thank you, Dr. Lamin Rame. It's been a Thank pleasure you. having you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rame. Thank you. You got me talking. Oh! Awesome. This is brilliant.